oil and gas emerging, albeit in the entertainment sector, we have another opportunity. And it's at its uh, nascency. It is just picking up. This is the time where our curriculum in our schools should be restructured, should be amended to reflect those areas that are, I mean, we are lawyers and we're here to serve this economy. And if we're not equipped to serve the economy, how, how can we make a success of it? So the question is, when you ask me what is hindering us, I think it's the fact that firstly we have not brought our, uh, our curriculum in the universities and the law school in tandem or up to, you know, up to speed with, with, with current uh, 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 developments. And you find that when all of these sectors take, sh take shape or, or when things begin to pick up, when all the work that, uh, that has been done now begin to materialize, then you see the foreign law firms or lawyers in place doing the work and then we begin to complain. Who's responsible for tinkering with the school curriculum? Well, at the university level, the National Universities Commission. At the uh, uh, Council of Legal Education is, is, is charged with that responsibility at the law school. And um, I mean, I understand that they are saddled with uh, enormous responsibilities now. Go to law school, I, I, I talk to the DG very often. And it's just even dealing with backlog alone is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a phenomenal headache for them, yeah? But um, that is not enough for us to... Uh, we, need to we need to rejig the, the architecture in that sector. And so there must be collaboration between the Universities Commission and the, uh, the Council of Legal Education, you know? And then, then those who have said privatize the, the law school, that might help to uh, fast track uh, this 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 uh, process of uh, of a uh, change in the in the curriculum. What about the NBA and the lawyers? What role, if any, do they have to play? Some law firms, a number of law firms, ensure that there's there's uh, there's enormous oh, sorry, I'm sorry, adequate in-house training for the lawyers, so that those skills that they were, they've not been able to pick up at the law school, they they can get them on get on the job uh, training. We even go as far as, as the MBA, we go as far as intervening at the law school so that we, we allow for, apart from the law school uh, recommended externship, we also allow for internships so that they can come and begin to be introduced to these other areas of the law that they may not have been exposed to at the law school. Uh, this, is, this is at the level of individual law firms, but at the level of the Bar Association. We have continuous legal education going on, and the focus is on, most of the time, is on these areas. So let me speak for the uh, section on business law, which I, of the Nigeria Bar Association, which I currently chair. We have been intervening in the law school for years now. You know, we've taken capital markets, for example. We have a capital markets committee, and we go to the law school just to have the students understand that there's an area called capital markets law. Because they're not taught. They don't, they're not taught, you know what I mean? They don't even know what it entails, you know, securities law, we, and, and then of course the operations of the capital market and all of that. We do that. You come for our conferences, we have, we have sessions for power, you know, electric, I mean, power is a major issue in Nigeria. There's no reason why we should have experts in power, considering all the issues that we have had in that sector. We should be able to export our legal services to the continent, you know, understand, because we have, we have been dealing with this issue. So as the Nigeria Bar Association section on business law, we have continued to intervene in this regard. And um, we, are, we, ha we have about 18 to 20 committees that are based on or are set up along subject matter lines. Subject matter uh, areas that are not necessarily taught at the law school, aviation law, uh, uh, competition and consumer protection. These are areas that if, we, uh, if, if they are properly tapped into, you will find the lawyers will keep very busy because we are churning them faster than we can find work for them. Let's round off with the fast approaching NBA section on business law conference. I know most of these issues that we've talked about will form the core of you know, that conference. I also know that it's a conference that runs from the 18th of June to the 20th, but what can participants look forward to at the conference? Our focus this year is on us, the lawyers, and our, and our craft, legal practice. Uh, in previous years, and for good reason, we look at the economy, we look at uh, subject matter areas that are tangential to law, but related to the practice of law. But this year we thought to ourselves, let's go back to the basics and look at how law is being practiced. And like I, I mentioned earlier, the changes that are imminent or that have already arrived, how are we adapting 
to these areas. We're going to look at technology uh, because for me, in fact, that for me is the most exciting of the sessions I'm looking forward to it because technology has changed and will continue to radically change the face of legal practice. There's so much going on, artificial intelligence, all sorts of things that are actually pretty much rendering lawyers redundant in certain areas. And we cannot pretend it doesn't, that it doesn't exist. So we must consider, we have a keynote speaker who is coming into that technology session. He's a futurist, those of them who have spent time looking at the future of, of legal practice. And he's coming to show us, I believe, probably scare us uh, <laughs> about what, what the realities are and what is inevitable. <laughs> we must have an answer to all of this. Also, one session I am also looking forward to, and which I hope you will attend, is the debate where we're going to talk about the rules of uh, we're going to talk about uh, the rules of professional conduct and uh, some of those uh, rules and regulations that uh, we are, that have uh, governed the practice of law for years now. And we're having a debate, light-hearted debate, but also but very critical, where we want to look at those rules again, we want to re-examine them and find out how fit for purpose they, they, they remain, you know, so there's uh, issues like uh, the attire of the lawyer, issues of uh, visit, client visitation, things like that, that were very relevant, very appropriate for a certain age and time, and then we're just wondering whether they remain relevant today. However, I, I must tell you that um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't aim to achieve everything at our conferences we tend to want to lay the markers, we tend to want to define the issues. And then in the course of the year, you know, between conference, one conference and the other, we want to, using our committees, you know, uh, distill the issues that have been, have been uh, identified at the conference and then building on them and, you know, taking steps to ensure that we implement resolutions arrived at at the conference. So when we come to conference 12, because this is the 11th edition, we, we will be able to report that these are the decisions taken at the conference 11 and uh, resolutions arrived at and these are the steps we have taken in the intervening period you know so it's not just a talk shop